Locke just ran up on this motherfucker and started choking him. You motherfucker, you fucking... So we had to grab Pac because we like, Pac, we, we not asking for all of this, bro. Did you have any relationship with Pac in them days? I had an, you was big and he I had was an incredible, big. I had an incredible relationship with Pac. Um, wow. Me and Pac been friends from early leaders days when he before he put out his solo shit when he was still just dancing with digital underground um interesting story of one of the early pot interactions so we had a we had a college date to do we had to do a show at a, at a college and digital underground was performing and leaders was performing we only on our first album right and we had to do sound check. So we get to the sound check a little bit late. Digital had already did their sound check and we get there a little late. Digital broke out. I think Pac and Money B were still in the, in the neighborhood. I don't know where Money B was exactly, but he, Pac wasn't there by himself. You know what I'm saying? So we're getting ready to do the sound check. The, 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 the sound man was on some bullshit because I guess we took too long so it was time he felt like fuck that I'm not sticking around to do this sound check right so he's shutting shit down and he acting like he getting ready to leave and we kind of like on some damn we really want to get this sound check done and the crazy shit is Pop he kind of saw that there was a little bit of friction going on and he just came and involved himself in this situation. And, and Pop turned to this white man and he was just like, yo, he said, um, I need, I need, I need, um, I need you to cut this motherfucking soundboard on. Leaders of the new school gonna get their sound check done right now. Fuck you talking about you ain't turning on the equipment. And he, he just started spazzing on dude and, you know, the, the the man wasn't trying to hear what Pac was talking about, so he acting like he, he breaking the fuck out. So Pac just ran up on this motherfucker and started choking him. You motherfucker, you fucking... So we had to grab Pac because we like, Pac, we, we not asking for all of this, bro. Chill, my nigga. Like, we, we, we just want to sound check. This ain't war, bro. But that's the type of dude Pac was. Uh, so with that said, was you in a weird position? And I don't really want to elaborate, but being that you knew him since Digital Underground and he had uh, beef with Big, was you ever in a weird position being cool with both of them? Or it was like, yo, bus, bus, he's neutral, whatever the case may be. You know how we was raised. Crack, you know when you know and you're friends with two people that are conflicting you're supposed to be the neutralizer you're supposed to be the one to try to do whatever you can to squash it you ain't supposed to pick no side I'm not gonna lie I was closer to Big even though I knew Pac first because I went to school with Big I was in Big's home mm -hmm. I hug and kiss Big's mother she hugs mm -hmm. and kisses me you know, C's and all of them. We all, we grew together. Mm. You know, I knew Pac, but I haven't been in Pac's home. I, you know, I don't know the late, great, beautiful of Fanny Shakur, his mom. I, you know, we didn't have the same interaction based on us not living in the same proximity and space. So, you know, the, the circumstances is what created my relationship dynamic to be much stronger with Big and D-Rock and Kim and C's and the whole Junior Mafia. Biggie's moms. You know, me and Diddy, you know, that's one of my closest friends in the world. So, you know, and we was all on this side. You know, we was seeing each other crossing paths. So it, it was it was really tough for me to be in the middle of that. I mean, it was also like when I saw Pac and Q-Tip have beef. Um... Tribe. I never knew this. This is a jumper moment.
This is a joke for a moment. I never knew yeah, Pac and Q-Tip had beef. Yeah, Pac and Q-Tip had a very serious and a very intense beef. Like, thank you, Gonzalo. Um, this is during the time when I'm shooting a higher learning movie. Right? We talking like 93, 92. And Source Awards, before they started to air on television, was at that same location um, at the Paramount Theater in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it was called at the time, I believe. Mm -hmm. This is the same stage where Suge Knight tried to dish puff at that Source Awards. So this particular Source Awards, I believe, was the one or two of them before that particular moment, right? So me, Tupac, Omar Epps, we were staying in the Oakwood Apartments, which is the fully furnished apartments in L.A. on Hollywood Boulevard in Fuller. I stayed there before. <laughs> So, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, in this particular crib, it's, it's, it's like buildings full of fucking fully furnished apartments. Pac was in one floor. Omar Epps was on another floor. I'm on my floor. We bouncing back and forth to each other's cribs the whole time we out there shooting movies. And Tupac, during this time frame, had to go to New York because he was performing at this particular Source Awards. So mm -hmm. this is when we was all performing off of that tapes, crack. Mm -hmm. So you know, once the motherfucking engineer press play on your DAT tape, it ain't like you could stop that shit and play. No, 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 you gotta go. You gotta go, right? <laughs> so Tribe was performing, no, Tribe was doing their acceptance speech for best group of the year. They had won the award for that that year at the source. And Tupac was supposed to be the, the next performance after their acceptance speech was complete and Pac got introduced, right? So somehow the production person, the stage production manager, wasn't paying attention to what was really happening. And the motherfucker ended up pressing play in the middle of the tribe acceptance speech. So Pac just comes out there performing all over their speech like he was shitting on their speech. You feel me? So that wasn't Pac's fault, but it looked like a flagrant Pac dish. It looked like some Pac shit. Right. It looked like a flagrant Pac dish. Pac 101. Right. So, you know, and, and at the time, because Pac you know, had this little rep of being a little bit of a loose cannon. It looked like, all right, here he go again, right? So the beef starts. Pop comes off the stage, tribe, they with Zulu Nation, and shit get crazy. So it ain't lead to no blows, but a, a, a pressure was was very intense between Tribe and Pac at the time. And they ended up fortunately not going to blows, but they didn't walk away from that shit with the beef squashed. Mm. So it was going to lead to something if they crossed paths again and somebody didn't step in to intervene and mediate and try to put it to, to bed. Pac came back to the Oakwood Apartments. And, and you there. Yeah, and I'm there. And he, he know my relationship with Q-Tip. So he gave me the call and said, you got to come check me real quick. So I come in, I pull up on Pac. When I pull up on Pac, we ain't even talk about it right away. I'm just, I, I get to his apartment and we in there chilling and he actually got mad blood all over the place. And and he, he had an MPC... 60 beat machine in his apartment and it was looping this Isley Brothers sample and he had wrote about three, four songs to the same sample for different records 
which was confusing to me because I never saw that. Like, I write one song to a beat. I'm not writing a different song to the same beat. Pop wrote three or four songs to this same sample. And we blowing tree and, you know, I, I ain't want to seem anxious to know what he was talking about because, you know, it's also the vibe. The, we hanging around, we blowing tree, we just bobbing and chilling. So it almost was like he forgot to talk to me about what he called me to talk to him for because he had got caught up in writing these songs. Mm -hmm. So I eventually said to him, you, you, you wanted to holler at me about something? And he go, oh, yeah. So, you know, this is what happened with me and Q-Tip, and I know you and Q-Tip is like brothers, and it wasn't my fault. They press play on the deck. I fucking hear my song. I go out there. I got to do what I'm doing. I didn't, you know, I'm focusing on the shit that I got to do. So I wasn't even really paying attention to the fact that they was doing their acceptance speech. And when they approached me on some shit, I didn't know what it was about. I need Q-Tip to know I wasn't on no bullshit. Like, I got unbelievable respect for Tip and Fife and Tribe. So Tip and Pop spoke. They actually squashed the shit. And they were now trying to strategize a way to get on BET and do a public truce. And it didn't get to happen. Yeah. Yeah.